Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Intermediate Spanish. Uh, today, we're a couple of minutes late getting going. But I suppose that's uh, par for the course sometimes <coughs> with this arrangement. We have, uh, I believe we had an, an assignment to answer the questions at the top half of page 258, lesson 12, lección 12. Um, <clears throat> could you please respond to say that you're ready for this review? How many do we have? Three. Three. They named? Not yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> I got away without a pen. <laughs> I, just, I just want it to, for dem demonstrative purposes. <clears throat> okay, the first question. ¿Dónde mete usted su lápiz? ¿Su dinero? <clears throat> so, where do you put or insert your pencil or your money. So I did get one set of written answers and uh, we're in good shape here. So the answer would be <coughs> me meto using the reflexive would be the normal way in Spanish or you'd say meto mi lapis in el bolsillo. <clears throat> I put my money, uh, my pencil in my pocket. <clears throat> you can use it reflexively. Me meto el lapis en el bolsillo. When you do that, you're using the definite article instead of the possessive pronoun or possessive adjective. You're not saying my pencil and my pocket it's assumed that because you're doing it, it's your pocket and your, uh, your money and your pencil. So <clears throat> quickly you could just say <clears throat> me meto el lapis en el bolsillo. Or you could say meto mi lapis en el bolsillo. Meto mi dinero in mi billetera. I think that's a new word that came up in the in the in the uh, vocabulary earlier in the lesson. Billetera <coughs> derives from the word billete, which is a bill, like a, or a ticket, like a dollar bill or a ticket, uh, an entrance ticket. Billetera it means the thing that holds your billetes your wallet or your billfold or whatever you want to call it in English. <clears throat> okay, then number two, ¿A qué hora piensa usted recoger a su amiga esta noche? What time do you expect to pick up your girlfriend tonight? <clears throat> Pienso recoger now, when you use pensar and an infinitive, that doesn't mean you're thinking about it. It means you intend to. So it's a different meaning in pensar, which normally means to think. 
<coughs> Pienso recoger a mi amiga a las whatever time you choose. A las siete, a las ocho, <coughs> a las seis, whatever works. So, pienso recoger, or if you just want to take out the in, intention, just you just say recojo. Now, when you do that, normally you you have to remember the sounds here because you can't use the G from the infinitive, recoger. You have to change it to a J to get the same sound but for the O for the for the yo form of the verb. Recojo a mi amiga. A las whatever time you want. Seis y media, a las siete, whatever. And then you can say de la tarde or de la noche to qualify it further. If you have questions, please post them. Or if you have a comment, please post it. Next question. Cuesta mucho dinar de gasolina el tanque de su coche? Does it cost a lot to fill your gas tank on your, your car, your car's gas tank? So, <clears throat> cuesta mucho is the, is the question, does it cost a lot? So, the answer would be, Si sí, cuesta mucho, yes, it does cost a lot. Or you could say cuesta, put in the number of dólares. Dólar spelled with an accent on the O, dólar, and dólares, you just add the ES if it's more than one dollar to fill your tank, which it probably is. <clears throat> Number four, please come up with your questions because if it's not clear, I'll assume you know it. <clears throat> es posible comprar el boleto después de subir al tren o al avión. Es posible comprar el boleto después de subir al tren o al avión. Is it possible to get your ticket, to buy your ticket, that is, after getting on the train or the, or the plane, a airplane? Well, I think it varies with trains, but I don't think it's ever possible with planes, although I could be wrong. <clears throat> so normally the answer would be, Normalmente no es posible comprar el boleto después de subir. And you can say al tren or al avión, whichever you choose. So... <clears throat> I did get written answers from one student who shall remain nameless at the moment. Um, <clears throat> the answer to that question and um, number four was he included normalmente, normally, normalmente. <clears throat> All right, Teresa. Um, and again, I'm not good at Spanish, but mi coche hibrido usa menos gasolina. Mi coche, what was the last sec second word? H I B R I D. Hibrido, hibrido. Mi coche hibrido no usa gasolina, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so <clears throat> everyone understands that in Spanish, right? 
my hybrid car doesn't need gasoline. Some, some, some hybrid cars actually have a dual fuel system though, I think. Some are completely hybrid uh, or completely electric or hybrid meaning a cross between fu a liquid fuel and electric. That's my understanding. Numero cinco. De que se queja usted? What a great open-ended question. What do you complain about? <clears throat> so how do you answer that? Notice that it's a reflexive used verb. So me quejo de whatever you complain about. <clears throat> And one answer I got was, uh, Me quejo de largas colas de tráfico. Me quejo de largas <coughs> colas de tráfico. Long lines of traffic. Cola, you know, means tail, but it also means a line in this, in this case. Número seis. ¿A ustedes les importa mucho si no vengo a clase mañana? <clears throat> do, you all, do you all care very much or does it matter to you much if I don't come to class tomorrow? Well, since we don't have class tomorrow, it probably wouldn't matter to you, but in the other class it will matter. <clears throat> Me quejo cuando tengo frío. I complain when I'm cold. Very good. The number six was A ustedes les importa mucho si no vengo a clase. <clears throat> Do you, does it matter to you all much if I don't come to class? <clears throat> they had mañana in the, in the question, but we can dispense with that. <clears throat> the, the, the question can be misinterpreted as it was on the one submission kind of reverse the subject and object because it interpreted it as would, would the professor mind if the student didn't show up? <laughs> well, of course. <clears throat> so, to answer that question strictly, it would be, si nos importa mucho. Si nos importa mucho que usted venga a clase mañana. Nos importa mucho que usted venga a clase mañana. <clears throat> or if you want to use the familiar, que tú vengas. Nos importa mucho que tú vengas a clase mañana. So for number six. That's number six. Brian commented, si a nosotros nos importa mucho si usted no vien a clase mañana porque sin usted no podemos aprender español. <laughs> Very good, Brian. I like the I like the sentiment. And Teresa commented, me importa mucho si ud. Usted, usted, that's an abbreviation, U-D. No vien a clase mañana. Okay, what's important here in both of these responses <clears throat> is that we need to use the subjunctive in the sub subordinate clause. So, does it matter to you much that that I not come to class? 
tomorrow. So that benga with usted, the answer would be C, si, no se importa mucho que usted venga a clase. Or, si no se importa mucho que tú vengas a clase mañana. <clears throat> Did everyone get that? Venga for usted and vengas for tú in the subordinate clause there. The if clause. Number seven, numero siete. Cuando usted coge alguna enfermedad, se acuesta enseguida en su cama. So the short answer that I got was, C. Si. Cuando estoy enfermo, which was uh, a simpler way to say catch a sickness, when I am sick. Cuando estoy enfermo, generalmente me acuesto. I generally lie down. Brian says, si cuando cogo alguna enfermedad, me acuesto en seguida en mi cama y mi esposa me dice que soy un llorón. <laughs> llorón with two L's. Okay, Brian. <clears throat> I understand what you're saying. Uh, I didn't hear, I didn't remember all of the pieces of it, but I'll try to get it back to you here. <clears throat> Cuando cojo, okay, if you use the word, the verb coger, you have to spell the first person singular C-O-J-O, to preserve the sound of the G before the E. Cuando cojo alguna enfermedad, me acuesto en mi cama or en la cama. Me acuesto. Teresa is wondering, can you say acustarme instead of acusto. Uh, I'm sorry, what was it? Uh, me. Can you say acustarme instead of me acusto? Ac acostarme? Well, it has to, it, that's the infinitive. Um, you have to use that in conjugate in com combination with something else. Um, me acuesto is the conjugated form. Acostarme is the infinitive form, but you have to have a conjugated verb with it. And I didn't quite get everything. Um, can you read her response again? Can you say acusarme instead of me acusto? Me acuesto, you e. Me acuesto. You can say acostarme, si. Um, <coughs> <clears throat> but you ha you can't just use the infinitive. You have to have something to go with the infinitive. Um, let me see if I can come up with a, uh, <clears throat> Cuando cojo alguna enfermedad, voy a acostarme. Or me voy a acostar. That way you're using the, uh, the infinitive and you, you have the uh, choice to put the me either before the conjugated form of a verb like me voy a acostar, I'm going to go to bed, or me acuesto, I go to bed. Or voy a acostarme is another variant on that where you tack the 
me onto the end of the infinitive. Any further comment or question on that? Okay. Es más fácil subir las escaleras o bajarlas. Number eight. Es más fácil bajar las escaleras, which is one that's which is the short answer. But if you want to say than go up, que subirlas. Es más fácil bajar las escaleras que subirlas would be a complete thorough answer, but es más fácil bajar las escaleras is fine. Brian answered, para mí es más difícil subir la escalera que bajaría. Okay. If, if, I, if I understand what you did, um, Brian, you just, instead of using escaleras in the plural, you use the singular. And that, that, that's fine too. But escaleras in the plural is a little more common. So number nine. Muere mucha gente en una guerra. Now, <clears throat> do a lot of people die in a war? In English, we use a plural. People is a plural, but in Spanish, it's a singular. So the straight answer would be, mucha gente muere en una guerra, or si, sí, mucha gente muere en una guerra. But one way to ch change that, to use a plural, is to say, muchas personas mueren en una guerra. <laughs> mean basically the same thing, but you just got to remember that la, the word gente, la gente, is a singular, even though we think of the word people as a plural always in English. For number nine, si en una guerra se mueren mucha gente, Se mueren o muere? M-U-E-R-E-N. Okay. When you're saying gente, you would not use the N plural on the verb. Muere mucha gente. And it doesn't, it's not, um, it can be used reflexively. Se muere, but normally you wouldn't use it in this context. Muere mucha gente. Si en una guerra muere mucha gente. <coughs> Or if you did what this other this person said, they said, muchas personas mueren. <laughs> there we go. We have a, an able assistant here who's doing pretty well with her <laughs> Spanish. <clears throat> Número 10. ¿Qué hace el matador al toro? Notice what they did with toro. They used a personal ah. <laughs> so they personified the bull in this question. <clears throat> so the answer that I got was C. El matador mata el toro en la plaza de toros. Plaza de toros is the bull ring, the bullfighting ring. The, the plaza of bulls, <laughs> literally. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> the question uses personal ah before the toro. This person chose not to use it. Either way would work. If you want to personify the uh, bull, you use the personal ah. If you want to just talk about him as an animal, hey, that's okay too. <laughs>
Questions? Comment? So I think we maybe have a clarification here. Okay. Hente equals people and personas equals persons. Well, las personas can be people. Literally, it's persons. La gente is in l grammatical terms. In Spanish, it is a singular noun, even though it's like a collective noun. If we said um, the people of this country, whatever, okay, we would mean that in a plural sense. <clears throat> if you use gentes, it's like saying peoples, different groups of people. I think, does that make sense? I hope. Grita, mu grita usted mucho en los partidos de fútbol americano. <clears throat> so the answer is, according to this person, Grito mucho, solo, with an accent on the first O, or solamente, with no accent, to mean only. Cuando mi equipo comete errores. I shout a lot only when my team makes mistakes. <clears throat> Grito mucho, solo, or solamente, Cuando mi equipo comete errores. We have two answers. Teresa says, no grito, nada, porque no voy a partidos de fútbol americano. Perfecto. Uh, Brian says, no, no grito mucho en los partidos de fútbol americana, pero algunos gritan mucho. Algunos gritan mucho, sí. Algunos, meaning some people, gritan mucho. So, Brian evidently doesn't get into the, uh, the, greet, the, the yelling frenzy. <laughs> <clears throat> Finally, number 12. ¿Rompió usted alguna vez su reloj? Did you ever, or sometime, break your watch? Excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to answer this simply by saying, C, si rompí, accent on the I, el, el reloj, or mi reloj, una vez, one time, or unas veces, sometime, or algunas veces, sometimes. <clears throat> you could say, rompí el reloj, or me rompí el reloj. You, in other words, you could use, I'm sorry, you could say, rompí mi reloj, or me rompí el reloj. Now, how does that work? You use the reflexive to substitute for the possessive adjective. <clears throat> and it's normal to do that in Spanish. Me rompí el reloj. I broke the watch on me, <laughs> so to speak. <clears throat> Rather than say, rompí mi reloj. Either way works, but it's more common to use the reflexive pronoun instead of the possessive adjective, me. Brian, Brian. says, no recuerdo que yo nunca rompí mi reloj. Okay, what, what was the second word? No recuerdo? Uh -huh. No rec <clears throat> So, Brian doesn't remember breaking his watch. <laughs> and Teresa... Nunca rompo mi relo porque no tengo un relo. Okay. <clears throat> I think 
Teresa, you used the present tense. Nunca rompo mi reloj porque no tengo reloj. Okay, she doesn't break her watch because she doesn't wear a watch or he doesn't have a watch. Good, good uh, exercise there and good, good reinterpretation of the questions and so forth. So we have now a f an, almost another half hour to talk about the imperative <coughs> using usted or ustedes, except they, uh, they just start out with the plural only. I don't know why, but we'll, we'll figure it out here. Move some stuff around. Page 258, 259. And then we'll go on to some of the other variations. Okay, so just a, a quick preview. A command form has a variations, right? <clears throat> it can be either usted or tú, or ustedes or vosotros, okay? So you can either use the familiar or the formal, and it can be either singular or plural. Then, the other variation is it could be positive or negative. Do this or don't do this. So, there's a lot of, a lot of pieces to move around here. <clears throat> well, let's look at the, the positive in the plural usted. Entren ustedes. Y'all come in. Enter you all. <laughs> Enter you, plural. However you want to interpret that in English. It doesn't interpret that very well. It's just the circumstantial as to whether you use usted or ustedes or the more familiar tú and vosotros. <coughs> Señores, pasen ustedes, por favor. <coughs> pasen, meaning come in. Pass, but that's, that means come in, in the context. Notice what's happening here. We're using a subjunctive form because the typical ending will contain the A in the indicative and in the subjunctive it switches to the E. <coughs> then we have to use um, the, l the, the precise subjunctive form <coughs> in um, certain roots. You know the, the, the verbs that begin the first person singular in the indicative with the G, like pongo, ago, traigo, bengo, so forth and so on. So you use that root with the G, and then you add the ending. So traiganme, <coughs> the A, because it's subjunctive, the N, because it's plural, ustedes, and me gets tacked onto the end. This is a positive command. You tack the, pers the object pronouns onto the end of a positive. We do it differently in the negative, as you'll see. Traiganme ustedes esos libres, esos libros. <clears throat> Bring me those books, y'all. <clears throat> Escuchen ustedes este disco. From escuchar, we get escuchen, changing the vowel, the typical vowel. <clears throat> <clears throat> Listen to this record, y'all. Esperen un minuto. Y'all, wait a minute. Vayan ustedes con Felipe. Y'all go with Philip. Diviértanse. Y'all have a good time. We don't have to say ustedes there. It's optional to use the ustedes or the pronoun. Context will make it clear. Empiecen ahora el examen. Now here we have a little bit different. The, the Z in the, in the um, root of esperar, or, or, or divertirse. Empe empezar, sorry, I'm, I'm losing my place as we go. Empiecen from empezar with a Z has to change the Z to an E, to a C, just for consistency's sake. 
wouldn't have to, uh, but it does. Empiecen ahora el examen. Empiecen ustedes el examen, is what's implied. The ustedes is implied here. Denme estos discos, esos discos. Give me those records. Jueguen ustedes al ping pong. You all play ping pong. Now here's a negative. No me digan eso. Here we go back to a different word order in the negative. The, the object pronoun goes before the verb in the negative command. No me traigan esos papeles. Don't bring me those papers. No me los traigan. Don't bring them to me. No lean esa revista. Don't read that magazine. Page 259. No pidan más café. Don't order or request more coffee. No hagan eso. Don't do that. No se quiten los zapatos aquí. Don't take off your shoes here. Notice it's not your shoes, it's the shoes. We don't need to use the possessive in Spanish. <coughs> In fact, we, we just don't. <clears throat> no se quiten los zapatos. Don't take off shoes here, we might say. Now we can do a, a command form saying let's do this or let's not do that. Again, we change the vowel. <clears throat> Procurar means to try. So procuremos terminar antes de las tres. Let's try. Procuramos was we are trying in the indicative. Procuremos is the, in, is the subjunctive. Let's try to finish before three. Volvamos mañana. Let's go back or come back, probably go back here. Mañana. Let's return tomorrow. In other words, it works either way. Salgamos ahora. From salgo, let's leave now. Let's go out now. Salgamos ahora. Juguemos un poco. Notice what happens here when we change the vowel. We have to change. We have to use that silent u after the g. Juguemos un poco. Are these making sense as I explain them? Any question on any of the examples so far? Okay, now we get a little bit different when um, the root changes in the subjunctive. For servir, it becomes S-I-R-V. Sirvamos café. Let's serve coffee. Sigamos charlando. Let's keep on chatting. Let's continue chatting. Seguir means to continue or to follow. Now, again, when we have a reflexive in the, in the positive command, it gets tacked on to the end. Pongamonos. We keep the stress in the same place. Pongamos become pongamonos. Now, what happened to the pongamos S? It vanished. <laughs> so it's pongamonos and not pongamosnos. That's too hard to say, so they just drop it. <clears throat> Similarly, Levantémonos. Levantémonos. From levantarse to get up. Levantémonos temprano. Let's get up early. Then the negative. No nos sentemos aquí. So sentemos is the subjunctive of sentarse. Okay. Let's not sit here. Question? Question. Subjunctive is a mood. It's not a tense. It's a mood. It has different tenses as well as the indicative. Indicative is just a straightforward iteration. Subjunctive is used when we have either a direct or even an implied command. Um, we'll get farther 
further into subjunctive in succeeding chapters. But I think one of the one of the questions required the subjunctive in an answer. Let's see. I think I changed it. I think I used the subjunctive in number six of the exercise of the questions. A ustedes le importa mucho si no vengo a clase mañana. <clears throat> that literally was, do, does it matter to you all much if I do not come to class tomorrow? If we change that instead of making an if clause, <clears throat> if we just left out <clears throat> um, left out the C, left out the if uh, or even included it. If we, does it matter to you if I don't come to class? Si no venga <clears throat> would be the subjunctive. And what's implied here is does it matter to you? There's an, there's an emotional uh, content there or an implication. <clears throat> That's why... Um, but we'll get more into that, believe me. <laughs> but anyway, the first person plural, the, the let's do something, is use, uses the subjunctive. And <clears throat> what we have to do is adjust the spelling to preserve the sound of the, of the, um, of the vowel of the consonants. In, in, for example, juguemos from jugar. We want the a instead of the a. We want the hard G, so we use the silent U. So these uh, first four, procuremos terminar antes de las tres. Let's try to finish before three. Volvamos mañana. Let's return tomorrow. Salgamos ahora. Let's leave now. Let's, let us leave. Juguemos un poco. Let's play a little. Then with servir, it becomes sirva as the root sirvamos café. Sigamos charlando. Let's keep on chatting. Now we have the reflexive when, for example, ponerse to put on. Pongámonos el sombrero. <clears throat> the first S in pongamos goes away. Pongámonos. Let's put on, we would say in, in, in English, our hats. But collectively in Spanish, we just use the singular. Levantémonos. Levantémos would be without the reflexive, but since we're putting the reflexive nos on there, we drop the first S. Levantémonos temprano. Let's get up early. With the negative, <clears throat> we don't have that issue. No nos sentemos aquí. Now, you know sentir and you know sentar. <clears throat> so sentir would change to an A. So sentar changes to an E. Let's not sit here. It has nothing to do with the feeling, sentir. <clears throat> Sentémonos allá. Here we use the reflexive. We drop the first S. Let's sit over that way. Allá. And then you can use the vamos a. So I mean the same kind of thing. Vamos a jugar al tenis. That essentially means the same thing as juguemos al tenis. Let's play tennis. Vamos a volver mañana. That's not straightforward. We're going to return tomorrow, or it could be. But it's one way of saying, volvamos mañana. Let's return tomorrow. No vamos a sentarnos aquí. No nos sentemos aquí. 
again with the negative the nos comes before the verb the verb form no nos sentemos aquí no vamos a sentarnos aquí we mean the same thing except that no vamos a sentarnos aquí could be just straightforward we're not going to sit here but <clears throat> no nos sentemos would mean let's not sit here vamos a ponernos el abrigo we're going to put on our coats or let's put on our coats we could also say pongámonos el abrigo the way we did um, with the sombrero in the previous grouping pongámonos el sombrero or vamos a ponernos el sombrero means the same thing so the negative with two and then the positive with two <clears throat> the negative they use first because we're using a subjunctive form no me digas mas mentiras tell me no more lies Backtrack. Vamos a volver mañana equals let's go? Question mark. Means let's let's return. Volver is to return. Let's go to return tomorrow. We're going to return tomorrow, or let's return tomorrow. It depends on the context as to whether you interpret it as a straightforward, we're going to, or a command ourselves let's do it <clears throat> it can mean either one it just it's a softer way uh, of saying the same thing they put up above in we're using the subjunctive <clears throat> vamos a volver mañana would be volvemos mañana or volvamos mañana excuse me volvamos using the subjunctive form changing the vowel <clears throat> So the negative using to, you use the subjunctive. No me digas mas mentiras, meaning tú, no me digas mas mentiras. No te pongas ese sombrero ridículo, don't put on that ridiculous hat. Tú is the subject, you, familiar. No te levantes al mediodía, don't get up at noon. Paco, no me des más discos viejos. Paco, don't give me any more old records. Ana, no te sientes aquí. Ana, don't sit down here. Or don't sit here. We can say sit or sit down. <clears throat> but notice that senter, sentarse is to sit. <clears throat> But it's easy to get confused because sentir means um, to feel. If I wanted to say, Ana, don't feel that way, no te sientas así. Again, we flip the vowel back to the A to make it the subjunctive command. Don't feel that way. No te sientas así. <clears throat> Teresa, no pagues la cuenta. What do we do here? To preserve the hard G, we use the silent U. No pagues la cuenta. The negative uses the S. Pepe, no te quites los zapatos en clase. Joe, don't take your shoes off in class. Ramon, no duermas tanto. Ray, don't sleep so much. Lalo, no seas malo. <laughs> Lalo, don't be bad. <laughs> don't be bad, right? From ser. <clears throat> Enrique, no vayas al cine esta noche. Vaya form is from ear in the subjunctive. No vayas al cine esta noche. Ricky, don't go to the movie tonight. Carmen, no leas esa revista. Carmen, don't read that magazine. Question. Okay. 
We're running low on battery, so we'll 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 halt it there. Go ahead and look through. Um, up to the top half of 263. That takes takes you through all of the command forms, singular, plural, formal, familiar, and so forth and so on. And you'll notice that there are some shortened forms for the affirmative to, starting at the bottom of 261. Those are the only with the, um, and, and then on 262, you'll see the contrast between the positive and the negative. So as you do your study, prepare questions for next time. Or Lynn, Lynn says, gracias, professor. I miss joining my classmates in person. Pero the professor doesn't call on me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll call on you when you're here. <laughs> <laughs>